this is all what I did by handmade. First of all, I need to decide where to put all the PCBs. I made this wooden case covered in two sides with the glass and I put all the PCBs inside. It was easier to mount a transformer on the top. As you can see, I'm using a transformer and mains electricity instead of batteries. Why did I do that? Why did I make the life so much difficult? I did this because batteries are not constant voltage source. If I would use this 9 volt battery and the circuit is drawing roughly 1 amp, the battery voltage will go low for a short period of time. And here I got the LM7805 voltage regulator. And if we check in a data sheet, we can see that LM7805 has 2 volt dropout voltage. This means that the input voltage should be at least 2 volts higher than output voltage, which need to be at least 7 volt. When the battery voltage will go under the 7 volt, we probably would have problems with load regulation. I could find a regulator that has low dropout voltage. For example, LM2940 has dropout voltage of half a volt. But this is not a temporary solution. This is why I choose to use a transformer and mains electricity. Here it comes the mains wiring. Goes to the transformer, which steps down from 220 volt AC to 12 volt AC. Then I built a bridge rectifier using four diodes to make a full wave rectification of the signal. Two diodes work simultaneously to convert full AC signal to DC. Then goes to the smoothing capacitor to reduce the ripple rejection and ensure the main stability. And finally ends up to the voltage regulator which gives a nice constant 5 volt regulated DC. There's one more thing. We have two places that dissipate heat. Bridge rectifier and voltage regulator. I put a big solder underneath of each diode and it works fine. But the main problem was with the regulator. I should have avoided the higher input voltages, because the higher difference between input and output, more heat will be generated. And my transformer can give me 12 volt full RMS, but it should be around the 15 volts peak. And for 1 amp, <coughs> the power dissipation will be around to 7 watts, which is a lot for a tiny device. This is why I need to make the heatsink reasonably big. And as clock pulse generator I used the 32 kHz crystal and counter dividers to get very precise 1 Hz in the output. Just for fun I wrote my name with LEDs and each LED is controlled by shift register. It's 74164. And I used a bunch of transistors. You might be wondering for what are these transistors I used for. Each output of shift register can give a maximum 27 milliamps. That tiny amount of current can possibly turn on 3 or 4 LEDs, but not 10 or 11. This is why I use this transistor, to amplify the electrical current coming from each output of shift register. And finally, I'll show you how the clock works. Here I got the counters 7490 and the decoders 7447, and the time will be displayed in those displays. This is how the back panel looks like. All the thin tracks and the general design I made in Circuit Wizard software, and I've constructed each PCB using the toner transfer method. As you can see, each PCB is bolted down in a back panel. In this case, I used the round plastic standoffs because it was easier to put a glue on them and buckle the mold in a back panel. As you can see, it's much nicer to use glass on the back. Here's come the main power connector and the load and power switch. This LED indicates that I put a load on it. From the beginning I didn't think about this case, so I put <coughs> two, uh, the two switches inside of the PCB. Now from this front glass it's impossible to put my fingers inside and change the time. So I left two wires, I drilled two holes with a small drill bit and I put two additional switches outside of the case. Now we can change the time without interfering inside. Now let's plug in power. Let's switch on and see how it works. As you can see, this LED is turned on. This means that I put a load on it. Here's the clock generator. As you can see, these two displays are in undefined state. 
why these things happen? This thing happened because I used most of the set and reset pins of the 7490s to reduce the complexity of the circuit. As you can see, I didn't use any of the logic gates. This is why these displays end up in undefined state. We need to change the time and... As you can see, it came back to normal. So that's it. Soon I will start with new series of tutorials. First of all, I will start with basics of electricity and I will end up with microcontrollers, how to program with microcontrollers and how to use Arduino platform to make a lot of different fun projects. Till then, keep subscribed, like and comment.